So just bear in mind that everything in here now is literally everything pretty much I use for street photography, but not all at once, because <laughs> it looks insane. The bag is rammed and far from minimal and light. So the purpose of this video is, yeah, just to show you that, um, because I'm trying to actually get my bag down to a very, very small, sort of really simple setup where I can literally grab the bag and put it over my shoulder and not even know there's anything in it. So yeah, far from pretty much the opposite of what, <laughs> of what I've got going on here. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you. If you're one of the subscribers or one of the people that have purchased F8 magazine, I'm super, super th uh, pleased to say that this is the first time um, since we started the magazine, this is issue six, that we have sold all of um, the orders that we're, all the magazines that we've purchased in straight away, and all the, and, and basically hit hit the, the amount of subscribers that we were trying to get just to to make it all work sort of thing. So yeah, it's really really starting to pick up, and I'm, we're so so pr uh, pleased with and proud of the magazine. And honestly, the amount of people that have, have emailed us to say that they've got the magazine and they're super pleased to either be in it or um, just to receive it and see the quality and obviously get some of the inspiration. So thrilled with that. So thank you again. It really really does mean a lot because uh, the feedback we've had from F8 magazine since we've started has been phenomenal. It really is a massive massive support to the channel. So anyway, back to the topic in hand. What's in my bag for street photography? Uh, this bag is absolutely flipping fantastic. I kind of stumbled across it by accident. It's a Vanguard. I've got it written down here. What's it called? A Vanguard VO G, Vanguard VO Go 46M. And it is a wonderful, wonderful little bag. It's been fantastic. And if you've ever used Vanguard stuff, you'll know how well built and how it literally is mint. It's, 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 it's been a fantastic bag. It doesn't get looked after. Obviously we're on the streets when it's getting thrown on the floor and, and whatnot, but um, it is a wonderful, wonderful bag and I'll continue to use and love it. Um, but I just wanted something smaller. But I'm trying to get everything down to this. This is a Peak Design slide, no, sling six liter. So this is a Peak Design Sling 6 litre. So a lot smaller than this bag, getting on for, well, under half the size of it. So I'm not gonna get everything in here in that. <laughs> it's not happening, not in one piece anyway. So yeah, well, this is, I don't know how this video is gonna go, but everything is, the idea of this video is to show you what I use and try and get everything like in a nice minimal setup that will go in that. And I can leave that bag ready to grab and go. And if I just wanna do a bit of street photography with a very minimal setup, it's all ready to go. Street photography, if you're new to it, you need to keep your bag, the opposite of me basically, very, very minimal, very simple, very light, um, only carry what you absolutely need. Don't go bring in 37 lenses like I end up doing. Um, and yeah, only bring what you need because you could be on the streets for a long time and um, you might need other things like water and, and, and umbrellas and waterproofs and food and that sort of stuff. So keep your bag as light as possible. It's not about the camera gear, it's literally about being out and about. So anyway, let's get into it. Uh, normally got a little mini tripod in the side of these pockets uh, for my YouTube. I don't know where that is. Um, it's a, like a, what do they call them? A, a, monk, a monkey pod, as, uh, as Mark Fernley calls them, a gorilla pod. So in the top section here, I've got absolutely tons of business cards. Now, these business cards are, I'm trying to keep this let me video short. These business cards are literally my social media cards. So they have got um, Gareth Danks, Landscape and Street Photography, um, my Instagram, my YouTube channel, and an email address that I'm happy for people to, to contact me on. And while you can see, is it going to... Uh, how well you can see that um, um, but just basically what the information I don't want, I don't want people to have a phone number I don't if you haven't got a business obviously I've got a photography company so I've got business cards with my phone number and stuff on but if I hand out my phone number to random strangers on the streets I don't really want people texting and ringing and stuff but Instagram and that specific create your own email address for your street photography that's just a basic business card that is so that I can go around doing street portraits and if people want to you know, get a copy of them, um, of the photographs, they can reach out and say, Oi, can I have my pictures? You've got to have cards in your thing. Just buy a couple of hundred cards, the cheapest chips. Um, I bought too good a quality of card there. I shouldn't have bought that quality. I should have bought cheap ones that you can scribble on and you don't care. Uh, oh yeah, in this front pocket, I've actually, I forget it's here actually, but I've got a notepad and a pen. And when I do uh, street photography workshops, I always write down what the person, the the the, um, the client considers to be their weaknesses in photography and, and whatnot. So I always write down what the challenges are for the day. So that's there just basically for workshops, uh, waterproof cover for the bag. If you're gonna use a bag for street photography, you've gotta get one with a waterproof cover. The other thing about that 
pad as well, what you can do is you have a page on the front of it that you've got a list of ideas or projects or themes because if you hit the streets and you don't know what to do, you can just sit in a coffee shop and think, right, what am I, what am I photographing? Get that pad out and have a look at the ideas because you just go blank, your mind goes blank. So the pad's a really, really good way of having some ideas and think, right, this is a, a list of three or four projects I'm running at, at the minute and these are the, these are the um, ideas I've got, these are the themes that I want because you just, you know, spend half an hour, spend an hour on whatever project. So that's a good idea. Top pocket has got my YouTube stuff in it. So it's a little pouch with what normally would be my Osmo Action. Um, I've got spare batteries, clips, uh, what else is in there? Audio stuff. I've got some interview stuff. So if I do actually do street photography with other people and I can put mic on them. Um, this is the microphone that keeps getting in the bloody way of the, of the Osmo. So the Osmo is there. That goes on there. And then I have put this tape underneath it stop the fur going in the front of it, but it rotates like that and you end up with the fur in the flipping front of the lens all the time because it just rotates so easy. But this is the Deity D4 Duo mic and it's got a mic on the front and a mic on the back, so it's absolutely wonderful. Really, really good mic. But obviously, 99.9% .9 of what I'm showing you isn't gonna have any relevance whatsoever to you. So I do actually always carry a copy of uh, my magazine as well because if I ever get talking to anybody that's interested in what street photography is, it's a good way of showing them um, what, what goes on. Right, flash. I, I've only just started doing flash photography for street photography, so it's something I've only just started uh, carrying in the bag. But the, the one or two times I have done flash photography, I've really enjoyed it, but obviously I would have to bring this bag and obviously go out specifically with the aim of using this flash. So uh, this is a Godox V80, V860 Mark II for the Fuji system, though I'm using it off camera flash. I've never used it on, on the Fuji anyway, with a trigger uh, at the bottom, which is a Calumet. Uh, flash trigger. I don't even know if they make these anymore. Dead cheap, 50 quid. The flash wasn't expensive either. And it's an amazing, amazing flash. Very, very over. I mean, it's massive. Street photography, you don't need a flash that big. This is, uh, oh yeah, this is something I put in the bag the other day because I thought I've never actually used it and I need to give it a go. This is a red filter. Um, red filters for shooting black and white. You can't obviously can't use it when you're shooting colour. But a red filter goes over your camera when you're, if, it's a good way of forcing yourself to shoot black and white. Because if you've got that over your lens and you're shooting black and white, you can't choose change the raws to colour afterwards. You have to you have to keep your, your raws black and white because it's going to look red otherwise. Um, but it adds contrast, so really really interesting. I need to use that. Obviously, you can you you can shoot black and white plus red in the in your cameras these days, so you don't actually need one of them. But I thought I'd give it a go. It costs a tenner or something like that. It'd be interesting to do a, a video on what the difference is between a, shooting with a red filter and, and not. Let's just empty the top of this. So I've just bought a Hero 10, GoPro Hero 10. I haven't used it yet. This is the mod thing for that. So that will be hopefully mean that we won't have the microphone in the way of the, of the video footage because that does my flipping head in. Um, maybe this will be good enough. I don't know. That's for the Hero 10. Little tiny mini tripod so that I can hold the GoPro on there. I don't know where the GoPro, oh, it might be in there. Um, iPhone charger, power bank. Right, so you can make a list of what I'm going through now and see what you actually think I should need, I should use and perhaps put in the comments anything that you think is ridiculous for me to bring. Um, this is just a nut bar. I have a bit of an issue if my sugar level drops, I start feeling utter crap. So I won't go anywhere without having something sweet in a bag. Um, so Snickers, normally my go-to is a couple of bars of Snickers. Definitely, if you're doing street photography, you just you just can't be bothered when your sugar level drops. So you do loads of walking. So yeah, definitely, definitely carry something with protein and stuff. Nuts are great if you can eat, if you can eat nuts. This is a little Pixie Manfrotto tripod. I bought this a hell of a long time ago on a trip to Ireland. Didn't think it was going to be any good whatsoever, and it's been amazing. It's incredible. It's so strong, and I love the way it works. And it's it's it's. Brilliant, it's a really, really good little thing. And obviously I use this for the holding the Osmo or holding the, 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 the GoPro as it will be from now on. Yeah, so in the back of this bag, let's get on with it as quick as we can. Good bags these are, if you've ever tried Vanguard. So that's where I normally put the magazine in there so it's nice and protected, that's for a laptop. But like hell, I'm bringing a laptop on street photography. Now I've got this little Nikon FM2 there because that's where I put, I'm not, I'm not a hipster. I, I would like to do more street photography with this. I just, I don't rate my, I don't rate the lens that's on it. It's, 
it's yeah i don't really rate this uh, 50 mil 1.8 it's the e, it's the e series and it, it's just the focus moves too much on it um so i i i, I putting that there just that that's where i put my xt4 um, or xt3 whatever i'm filming on so the xt4 with the 18 to 55 lens would go in there so that's why that's there so we can see that that's that's what that space is for now, if I've got that camera, it means that I have to bring this with me. This is my Nifty 50 1.4 from Fuji, um, 35mm 1.4. I know they've just replaced this lens, but look at the flipping size of it. It doesn't weigh anything. It is a crap lens as far as focusing goes, but it's a wonderful lens as far as contrast and just as, as, as a 1.4 prime. It's unbelievable. I absolutely love this lens and I won't go to a wedding, event, uh, street photography, anything without this lens. And I, if I could only go anywhere with one lens, it probably would be a 50 mil because I could do portraits and stuff with it, pick out details, do abstract stuff. So this lens is absolutely stunning. And as much as I'd like to upgrade it to the new one, I don't know if I'd be able to do that and sell this because look how small it is. The new one's much, much bigger, isn't it? So yeah, the new 1.4, which is coming out soon, I am tempted with, but this is so small. And I really, really love this lens. And as a street photographer, I think a 50 mil is something you always have to have in your bag. Um, if you're new to street photography, and especially if you're new to primes, the 50 mil is probably the one or the 35 mil equivalent. We're talking full frame now, apologies if you're a Fuji shooter. Um, we're talking full frame equivalent. So 50 mil full frame lens, regardless of what camera you've got, or a 35 mil full frame lens, equivalent is the one to start with. They are a wonderful, wonderful field of view and to get used to a prime like that and it's just it's just invaluable. Here's my GoPro. Ah oh, yes. Yes, this is the Hero 10 and I tried this oh, it's ripped isn't it. I tried I tried a oh yeah come on I forgot it comes with this little stand now. So I've got a new stand for it. So that's the GoPro Hero 10. Little furry thing around it as well just to it's ripped already like fur. I thought it would protect it, give me because I, I don't know what to do about audio on this thing so yeah it might be doing a few point of view um what they call it at pov videos where you literally just walk around with that not talking um because i don't know what to do with the audio right okay next thing is massive lens cloth always got to be honest i've normally got three or four of these in the bag i don't know where the ones are i must have nicked them but these things are, i go for the bigger ones if you can um always always got one or two in there um then we've got this thing the um my absolutely treasured fujifilm x100v which has just come out from repair which is why i've just taken a picture it's just come out from repair so thank you fuji for looking after this um i hated it going back for repair um but i've normally got the grip on here i don't know what i've done with the grip because obviously it's just come back for repair so i've just put i've literally just put the thing back on it and uh the this is the case uh weather sealing kit so you have to have this little uh piece of glass over the over the lens to guarantee that it's weather sealed and all that sort of thing. So yeah, this is the Fujifilm X100V. Now, this is kind of my desert island camera. I can do anything with a 35 mil. So I absolutely love um, this little fella. It is wonderful. But if I'm if I'm not using with this, because obviously there's no point bringing a prime lens if I'm shooting with this camera. If I've got the X-T4, which I think is there, um, filming my YouTube channel, then I might as well bring that prime as well. But this is the this is the one camera that will probably always go in the, in the peak design bag if i want a really really small and light setup with no other lenses um it will be the x100v with a 35 mil field of view full frame and um and obviously then the gopro just to film what goes on so these are basically if i was going to go absolutely minimal um it's this this is it and then the rest would be food <laughs> batteries for the x100v batteries for the gopro charger that sort of stuff and i would like to really really try that's what that this this thing is for it goes it's i think it's a 40 49 millimeter thread on there so that's what that that red filters for when i first got this oh yeah the first time i used this camera i did a video called a 35 mil challenge in snowdonia and it was the first time i used this in a video and i had it um two weeks old i think it was and I had it on a peak design clip and I, the bag wouldn't let me put it there. So I had to put it on the waist and I clipped it to the waist and then I went to climb up 
some hill or mountain or something, and it knocked the Peak Design thing off, and it fell, and it dented the top of the top panel. So it was two weeks old with a giant dent in the top of it. So there was another fault with this camera. So when it went back, I got Fuji to put a new top plate on it. So uh, it looks mint again. There is not a mark on it. It's absolutely brand new. So and I've always had an L bracket on to protect the boat. Anyway, so absolutely thrilled. This is a uh, Peak Design. I sound like an advert for Peak Design, don't I? Um, I do love their stuff. So this is the Peak Design Cuff, I believe it's called. Um, and this is the second one I've had. I've lost my first one. I do not know what I've done with it, but this is the Peak Design Cuff. They're they're quite expensive, they're about £30 for what they are. You can probably get a knockoff version cheaper, I guess, but it's very, very reliable and it just goes around your wrist and stays there. And basically, it means that you've always got your camera. Or I haven't even used it yet. I only, only arrived the other day. Um, I haven't been out and done any street photography. It just means I've all got, always got my camera around my wrist and um, I love it. So, you know, oh, that was close, isn't it? But all of that has got to fit in here, so I don't know. Um, I mean, if it's only if it's only going to be the X100V, that will go there. Um, if it's only going to be the GoPro, that will go there. And then probably got the tripod already on the GoPro. So pretty much, if I just wanted to grab a go out and do some street photography, to do a basic POV video, I can do it with that. And then just fill the top section there with batteries and memory cards and power banks. Um, and that's it. I might I might do a video on this red filter. I'm keen to see what the difference is with that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to try and do some more videos, more street photography. Oh, I've got one of them little silica things in there. What? Do they honestly do anything? <laughs> in, a, in a bag. I know they suck out moisture from lenses, but what does it do in a bag? It's not exactly airtight, is it? So yeah, it's a good bag. I chose this because it's six litres. I mean, it's... it's it sounds small, doesn't it? But it's actually really big. And obviously, the, the idea then of this is just literally goes over my shoulder, and it's, you know, it, it's out of the way. So I quite, I quite like the idea of this. And then if I wanted to, I can click a microphone. I can click the um, Rode Wireless Go to there, or that sort of thing. So, um, and then then you've got the capture plate, which can go on the side. If you've got, uh, if, if you're familiar with Peak Design capture plates, I can get another one and put it on there. Um, but that's, that is it. It's just literally everything's there. Can I think I've got my iPad Pro, which I don't even know if it will fit in here. I don't even. Oh, I'm using it here. Uh, I, I'm not one of those that carries an iPad. I know uh, my mate Roman does. Um, I've just bought an i a new. <laughs> I've just bought a new um, iPhone Pro Max, whatever you want to call it. So I don't really need an iPad. But if you did have an iPad, I suppose you could probably just fit it in the back there. And if you're one of those that likes to sit and sit in a cafe and edit your photographs and whatnot and see what you've got and, uh, and go through and edit them on an iPad and stuff or even make notes, I suppose you could put it in there. Uh, there is a pocket in the front actually, so I'll just zip it up. Yeah, there's a big pocket in there. I wonder if you could get your snacks, power bank, lead. What else do I need? That's pretty much it, isn't it? That's pretty much all you need. So yeah, that's my minimal, super min minimal street photography bag. Now obviously, if you're doing street photography, the last place your camera's actually gonna be is in the bag anyway. So that bag there, that's gonna be around my wrist. So that top section there is gonna be empty. So it was me worried when I got this bag that it's gonna be too small. But well, actually, if you think about it, in fact, that as well, <laughs> that's going to be my animal I'm filming anyway. So there's not going to be anything in the damn bag. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I could do, I could put the flash in there. There you go, flash is in there. Don't need that microphone. That's in my hand, GoPro there. Job done. Well, that's good. Anyway. I probably made this video five times longer than I wanted to again, so I'll leave it there. But yeah, I'll put links in the description to anything I've got there. And if you want to have a look and check it out, um, I don't really know if Amazon affiliated links make any difference to, the, to these days and whether they, they're, they're still a thing, but I'll put them down there. And if they do help me out, I've never seen any reward from it. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and uh, do check out F8 Magazine. And if you are a subscriber, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to see. Um, some more feedback. So if you are a subscriber to F8 Magazine, let me know in the comments what you think of the magazine. So I'm, I'm really, really proud of it. And again, we wouldn't be able to continue doing my YouTube channel without uh, your support. So I do really appreciate those of you who have, have bought the magazine. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in a future, a future video actually going out and using my new bag and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, take care guys. Thanks for watching. See you soon.